Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at how to utilize the Alpheum to Ethereum bridge. Say that you have some funds on your Alpheum wallet, your desktop wallet, the GUI, and you want to get it over to uh, the Ethereum network as an ERC20 token because it's swappable on Uniswap or what have you. I want to show you how to utilize the bridge, but also the steps you need to go through and make sure you pay attention, especially to step three and four as we move forward. Now, first off, as I mentioned, you're going to need your desktop wallet. I know there is an extension um, beyond this, and you could just use Wallet Connect, but the bridge makes it super easy. The website is bridge.alpheum.org, and there's a great guide on Medium. If you uh, want to just go and read that, I will link that in the description as well. First step is, well, you want to make sure that you have your wallets configured because if we go ahead and hit connect and you don't have any Alpheum already in your wallet, then there's not much going on. And I did create a new address just to connect with this bridge. And I'll explain why here in just a moment. But to connect to the bridge, we go to the website. You will see under the tab, there's three tabs, token, redeem, transactions. Redeem is important. Transactions is where you can see your past transactions over the bridge. But tokens is the first staple, right? And you're going to click connect. This is going to give you the three options of extension, desktop wallet, or wallet connect. So other wallets that have uh, support for Alpheum and have the wallet connect feature. In this case, all we're going to do is click on desktop wallet, which is going to pop up a prompt and you just need to hit open Alpheum. It's going to bring your desktop wallet up. But one thing that I noticed is it doesn't show my default address. Even if I try to uh, click the three dots, the default address that you have set in group one, two, three, whatever group it might be, uh, it, it's just not picking it up. So I had to create a new address. And to do that, all you got to do is go to uh, the main overview tab or the main overview page, right? And under your addresses or to the right of it, you click see more. And when you click see more, you could click new address. This, just give it a label, whatever you want, just so you know what it is in your wallet. And then don't choose it as a default. You could set it as a new default if you wanted to and you know send your money rewards there or whatever. Um, but just leave it, leave it alone, give it a label. And then under advanced options, you could put it on whatever group you want. Group zero, one, two, three, four, whatever. Well, it only goes zero through three but just choose whatever you want or don't even bother with the advanced options and just give it a label and hit generate. Once you generate, you should be able to see that wallet in the bridge itself. And now we can actually interact with it. That way, when you click connect, right? Cause you already have the wallet set up. You can go ahead and use that address as you see fit. Okay. You will be able to see a drop down if you have multiple wallet addresses to where you could select it. Just know the default one will not detect off rip. You can accept or decline. So in this case, we want to accept because we do want to connect to this bridge and this prompt of opening desktop wallet will go away. Now we are connected. Now it's just a matter of choosing your token. So you see here, select the token. Of course, Alpheum is the only one on it right now um, as the product continues to build and innovate and grow in a forward direction. And we can choose the amount of Alpheum that we want to move. Now, in this case, we're just going to say five for now and go ahead and hit next. But you wanna choose the amount. You can choose all of it, but just know that there's gonna be some transaction fees now that we're utilizing the Ethereum network. So you may wanna look at what the gas fees are first. And there's a number of different ways that we can do that. Let's go to Etherscan. And we can see at the top of the website, the gas is 27 GUE. And if we click on that, we can see the calculator. Not Normally what I like to do is I like to wait to uh, the network isn't as congested or the fees aren't as high. Usually I would say like late night weekends are the best during a busy trading week, Monday through Friday, uh, the, uh, the gas prices can go up. However, this is nothing compared to what we experienced earlier or in the past with Ethereum. So it's a lot better now. So you can still get away with it and be just fine. Just know that you might want to have some Ethereum on standby and whatever wallet we're going to be moving it to. And in this case, we're going to be moving it to our Ethereum wallet. So if you have a hardware wallet or what have you, you might need it in order to connect unless whatever wallet you're you're interacting with on Ethereum doesn't have a hardware wallet tied to it. But you need to set the amount and click next. So off screen, the hardware wallet that I'm utilizing is already set to the correct network, Ethereum. But we're gonna go ahead and click next, 
right? We need to connect our Ethereum wallet now. And so this is going to give you a number of different options, MetaMask or Wallet Connect. So you can use Zelle Core, whatever you have, uh, Exodus that you have your Ethereum in. So whatever wallet has your Ethereum, that's the one you want to choose because uh, you will need that. So in this case, we're just going to choose MetaMask. A window pops up off screen that you can't see. And here it is. So you would have to type in if I'm hoping you have a password on your MetaMask, but you would just want to type in whatever it is to log into that wallet. All right. So now my Ethereum wallet is also connected. And now we just get click next. And it says here, transfer the tokens to the Alphium bridge. This will initiate the transfer on Alphium and wait for finalization. If you navigate away from this page before completing step four, you will have to perform a recovery workflow to complete the transfer. So it's very important that you leave this page open. If not, there's a redeem way, but you're gonna wanna copy down the transaction number. So now we hit transfer. It's gonna want to uh, open, you know, take this action on our actual uh, wallet. And so we need to wait for this transaction to process and it's going to take a hot minute. So just be patient, leave this window open if you can. What's very important is that we notate or, or, or save that TX ID because we will need to use that for the redeem function, which I will show you. Quick side note, if your wallet locks, because it does auto lock after X amount of time of non-use, if your desktop wallet locks, and you hit the transfer button, it's just going to fail. Just disconnect, reload the page, and try again. But if the transfer does prompt us, which is what it should have done if it wasn't locked, it should have prompted us on our desktop wallet to approve the transfer, just like so. If that doesn't show up, like I said, uh, don't unlock your wallet yet. Go back to the website, disconnect, reload it, and you'll be good to go. The transaction never went through because we never approved it. So now that we have it here, call contract, we can go ahead and click send. And now we're authorizing that transaction. So now the bridge is going to do its thing, which is where the timer starts for you to wait for confirmation and get the information we need as a backup to redeem our tokens. Just give it some time. Uh, you'll see that transaction notification in the bottom left of your, your uh, browser window. And then now we just need to go grab the transaction ID that it's going to provide us in step three. That transaction ID shows up down here at the bottom, right below the transfer button that's spinning. And you can see how many confirmations is required in order for it to complete, 105. We're at one of 105. So that's all I was saying. You gotta leave this window open and give it a minute. But that transaction ID is super important to you. So go ahead and grab that, store it somewhere safe for temporarily, because you can use that just in case your internet goes out, power goes out. You can use that transaction ID to go to the redeem uh, function and recover those funds or make sure those funds go to your wallet. Now, just to speed up things for you, when you get to step four, it's gonna change from transfer to redeem. Let's go ahead and show you that now. You see right now, transfer's just circling and spinning. It's on eight of 105, so it's gonna take a hot minute. Eventually, that's gonna change to redeem in blue. You click it and your MetaMask will pop up to where you need to approve the transaction. One, you need to confirm that you want to sign the transaction and then approve the transaction in MetaMask. Once you approve and sign, what's gonna happen is, is now the token is going to appear in um, as you know, like import tokens in your actual MetaMask. And you can view the transaction on Etherscan at that time, right? Because that the redeem function is the final step. Then in your MetaMask wallet, you will see it says one new token found in this account and import tokens. It automatically picks up on that. And all you got to do is import it and you'll see it appear in whatever wallet you are utilizing, whether it's MetaMask or some wallet connect capable, uh, uh, you know, network or wallet GUI, whatever you might have. You click on import tokens and then import in blue and you are good to go. Now your uh, Alphium has made it over to the Ethereum network from your desktop wallet. And you'll see in the bottom right, token imported, you have successfully imported ALF, okay? It's just that easy. The hardest part is the waiting because it does take a long time to actually confirm. And again, if you did wind up leaving this website, closing it out, or the internet cuts out, power cuts out, whatever, that's why that transaction ID is super important to back up and have it saved somewhere just in case. 
you can always go back to the redeem tab and put in the transaction number provided to you under step three and then click on recover but while the steps are very easy for you to transport your alfium over to the ethereum network it's just more time consuming than some of the other projects i have integrated with and i look forward to the alfium team to continue to improve their gui wallet i would like to see the bridge kind of inside the desktop wallet and i do believe there are some progress or uh goals set by the team to accomplish either that or something similar to that in the future but for right now if you need to get your alfium over to ethereum you got to use the bridge uh, which I will have linked down in the description and that's going to do it for today's video Please do me a favor on the way out hit the like button Make sure to get subscribed hit the notification bell to stay up to date as well as check out additional links in the description That will support the channel and what we do here and I just hope you have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you next one